Thank you for taking time being with us today. Tell us a little bit more regarding your background. Well, I'm a, a certified tax coach, which makes me different from your typical accountant in that my main goal is saving small business owners money by utilizing <laughs> tax deductions and tax credits and the things like that that they don't necessarily know about. But the, the businesses I'm able to help are those in the U.S. Okay, and what, what typical businesses do you usually work with? Generally, it is businesses who have a net profit of at least 70, 80, 90,000 on up. Uh, service businesses, it can be a product type business, it can be just about any type of business, but it's when they start getting to the point that they're paying a lot of tax and they're going, ouch, that it's time for some tax planning. And what do you usually, what, what's some of the common, uh, common issues do you usually, usually see that are serious no-nos? Can you instruct us? <laughs> Well, the, probably the biggest issue I see is what I say is failing to plan. People don't realize that they can plan their way to a lower tax liability. And so they do nothing. And then the next year they get the same big nasty um, IOU to the government that they had the year before, or it's even bigger. So if they realize that they could actually plan, it would make a huge difference in, the, in their tax liability each and every year. And then outside of that, the next biggest mistake I see is them outgrowing their entity type. So they start out as maybe a sole proprietor or a general partnership, and down the road they're making a lot of money and paying a huge amount of self-employment tax and not realizing that they could save some money by being in a different entity type potentially. Okay, Diane, just for you to know, I've been bit before. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I just want to bring your knowledge because you are our savior, basically. You so you, need, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So you have some scars. <laughs> yeah, a, a, lot, a lot of them. So it, it's super helpful having someone like you that uh, has all the eyes checked and all the, all the details, uh, details uh, checked because... People are super focused on their business and they mm -hmm. usually go like this when it comes to the time to the tax returns. And, and, I, think, yeah. and I think after a while, you have to do the other way around. So right. I would like you to give some advice to our listeners so they could, how could they plan their, their business lives better so to avoid that huge burden, which is the, the tax that they have to pay? Well, I think most people live in the land of you don't know what you don't know because you are so busy focused running your business and you're busy trying to get the next sale made or the next customer on board or client or whatever it might be. And so you're giving minimal, if any, thought to your actual taxes. And so by turning around and hooking up with somebody who will coach you to a lower tax liability, you're able to start thinking about that from a proactive standpoint instead of being reactive. And we all know in business, that if you want to get ahead, you've got to be proactive and not reactive because you don't get anywhere if you're just being reactive. And so by utilizing the IRS code, then you're able to take advantage of all these legal deductions and credits and even some things that we would call loopholes because they're in the IRS code and use those in your business and start benefiting from them. Things as simple as that entity type that we were just talking about. I've seen that one strategy alone save about $30,000, $35,000 a year for one of my clients. And he didn't realize he was in, he had outgrown his entity type from when he first opened up in business. Uh, we also like to look at areas, things like retirement planning. Is there things there that can be done if that is on your goal list to have a certain amount put away for retirement? Is there some tax efficient ways of getting there? Take some deductions. Maybe not even take the deduction today, but then not have taxable income down the road. Some of those kinds of things, depending on what your particular goals, dreams, and desires are, and everybody is different. We look at things like maximizing your home office deduction. We have so many people working from home anymore uh, that it's a very commonly missed deduction. Now, it may not be a huge deduction, but even the small ones help. And so if you, if you know the rules for how to maximize that deduction, then you're able to take some more 
write-offs on your tax return that you didn't even know that you were missing before. And nice thing about maximizing that home office deduction is it also increases your mileage deduction. Because those of us who don't work from home, we can't deduct the miles from home to our office or our business. Those are non-deductible miles. We can only take from the office to wherever it is that we're going. Well, those who work from home, since your home office is in your home, you're generally able to deduct all those miles from home to wherever it is that you're going on business. So those are just some, some of the many, there's all kinds of them that we use for people, but some of the strategies, we have some great ones for people who are in the real estate market doing uh, properties and things like that, that can really save thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars when they go to sell a property. So there's just a lot in the IRS code. Do you think most people, especially uh, small, small business people, they fail miserably at this because they try to do everything by themselves and only when they are faced like this huge problem <laughs> that they have to face, now they are in reactive mode and now they seek you to try to fix something that probably if they went about a different way and then starting with you initially, they probably would avoid some, some, some liabilities later on. What do you think? You, you bet. Think of, um, you, you know, you've got this ache or whatever, this pain in your body, and it's tolerable. It's no big deal. You know, you can pop a couple Advil and keep on going. Well, down the road, pretty soon it's gotten to the point that it's really tearing you up, and it's like, okay, maybe I better go to the doctor. And you finally, you put that off because you're busy. And you finally get to the point that you can't stand it any longer and you go to the doctor and he says you've got stage four cancer, but if you would have come in a year ago, you know, they could have done something about it. It's kind of that same way in the tax world. You, you know, they, they tend to do it themselves instead of getting help because they think they can't afford it or they don't want to take the time. And so they'll just wade through it themselves, right, wrong, or otherwise, where if they would have hooked up with a professional at the beginning of their business, they potentially could have been saving money all along and they didn't even realize it because I get the privilege of, of, of amending people's tax returns all the time where I sit down and take a look at their prior two years tax returns and realize that um, I don't see this particular deduction and people in your industry always have this deduction or how come you didn't do whatever it was and it's because they did it themselves or because they had an accountant or a tax preparer who wasn't a real high quality one and they didn't know the difference between a high quality and a not so high quality person. And so then we'll get to amend their tax returns and sometimes I'm getting anywhere from ten to fifty thousand dollars put in back in their pocket for them of money that they overpaid the government just because they didn't know and they tried to do it themselves or they trusted somebody who really wasn't experienced and didn't understand the tax code very well. Then, if I were a, a small business person and starting out with new, a new idea, a new business plan and putting into practice, knowing what I know now today, I would seek someone like you before I got started <laughs> for you to tell me this is some of the pro possible hurdles that you are going to face uh, along the road. What do you think about this idea? Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly, yes. You will, you will more than save what you would pay in a fee, just in, in taxes, in penalties, in doing it wrong, in the stress of knowing that it's done wrong and not knowing what to do about it. All those kind of things have a price. And anytime you hook up with a, pro, a proactive accountant, you will save that, you know, far exceeding those savings as you work down the road. Gotcha. Regarding, regarding real estate and turning this to the main focus of this, of this show, what are some of the issues that you see usually with, with uh, first-time buyers of properties, some things that they, they have to, uh, to pay attention to avoid some of the common issues that you face in your, in your assessment? Well, one of the things I see here in the U.S. as people buy properties, they don't realize that they probably ought to put them in some sort of an entity. They just buy them in their personal name. Okay. Well, the problem with that, and I'm not an attorney, but the problem with that is if your tenant or somebody your tenant invites over to you, that home or that apartment or that duplex or whatever, and something goes terribly wrong, if something like that happens, you've exposed your whole personal life to them. Your personal assets are online. 
your anything that they can go after is on the line. But if we'll set that property up in a separate entity, whether it be an LLC or an S Corp, depending on what state you're in, then you've put a fence around that entity. And you've insulated yourself that if something goes wrong, the, the most that they can do is go after the assets that are in that entity, and the only asset is the property. Or sometimes there might be two properties or something in an entity. But you don't want all your properties in one entity. You want them in several different entities. So you can put those fences around them and protect yourself so that you never, ever lose your home or, or your other assets or anything. So you would advise for each property that, that you are, let's say, negotiating with a broker and trying to, to actually get the deal down, you would advise someone to always get a separate LLC per, per building. Is this what you're saying? Well, I several of the attorneys that I hang out with say no more than two or three properties in any one LLC, especially if they're encumbered with debt. So if you've got a note against them, there isn't a lot of asset for that person, somebody to go after. Now, if they're paid for, that might be a different story. But that's what they have said is what they would recommend. And so I have to you know, go with their recommendations because I'm not an attorney. But from the accounting side, I love it when my clients have all these various LLCs because we, I live in an LLC-friendly state, and I know some states aren't that way. So LLCs are S-Corps where they've got their, their various um, commercial properties or rental properties listed. Gotcha. Also, <clears throat> regarding changing, uh, uh, changes in... In, ta in tax planning and some pro uh, issues there, have you seen some some changes from the past to the present and now now the future? Something that is important for our listeners to know, or everything is just the same like it was several years ago. Well, right now we have a lot of uncertainty in the capital gains area because with President Trump, he's got a lot of things he would like to do. They haven't come to pass yet. If they do come to pass, then the whole capital gain structure will, will change dramatically. So we've been the same rules for the last few years, but we're just kind of waiting to see how much, if anything, Congress will act on because it could change the landscape for 2018 or 2019. You know, it's hard to know. We're watching it closely. Uh, and it makes it hard to advise people when they ask me, should I sell today or tomorrow? It makes it a little hard there because it, I don't know what Congress will or won't do as far as changing the capital gain rates. But we have some awesome strategies for people who sell a larger property. So a property that sells for more than about five or $550,000 that has a lot of gain in it. We've got some wonderful tax saving strategies to help you keep most of their money and not have to give so much of it to the government. Gotcha. Regarding, regarding your book, because I'm a bookworm, I always tell this to my guests, I, I read like an insane person. What made you write, <laughs> it's true, so what made you write your book? What is your book about for people that don't know? Tell us a, a bit more regarding that. Well, I have a few books. Um, is there one in particular you were looking at? No, it, it's, I, just, I just want to, to know your thought process, because when you start reading, at least from my end, you start reading a lot and you, you just want to have all your ideas kind of crammed like in one, one, one place, you eventually okay. start writing, writing down. So right. I'd like, right. yeah, I I like to understand your thought process and what made you write your first book. Tell us a little bit more regarding that. Well, what made me write my first book is I started thinking and looking back over various clients and various conversations that I've had with clients that happen on a very often recurring type basis. So I just kind of sat down and just kind of re was it, you know, kind of reliving those various conversations and different topics, of course, became different chapters. So the book that I'm talking about is called Stop Overpaying Your Taxes, 11 Ways Entrepreneurs Overpay and How to Stop It Now. And that is actual real case studies from my clients. Change the names, change the industry, so nobody can say, hey, that's me. Uh, but those were real conversations I've had with people. And I thought, well, if, if I'm getting asked these questions on a regular basis, then there's a whole bunch of people out there that have those same questions. And so that was the basis for that particular book. And, and, the, and, the, and the other ones, were that the same process? They were a similar process. I have the 10 most expensive tax mistakes that cost real estate professionals thousands. Um, that one is a very small little short, quick read book that's actually based on a seminar that I do. And so I like to tell people at the beginning of the seminar, don't take notes, 
Don't worry about writing things down. At the end, I'm going to give you one of my books, and it basically is the seminar. And so we took the various topics in the seminar and put them into a book format. And so I like leaving those because those are my big business cards. And I pass those out for free all the time. And people love to get their hands on them. Gotcha. Also, keeping, keeping our sub subject on books, besides your own, uh, share with our listeners some of the, your favorite latest reads. Oh, wow. I'm in the middle of rereading Think and Grow Rich again just because that one needs to be revisited every so often. Um, I really, really loved The One Thing by, I think it's Jeff Olson. Get, get it, Gary Keller. Get or, it. Well, Gary, oh yeah, sorry, One Thing, Gary Keller, and then The Slide Edge by Jeff Olson. Yeah, Those Jeff Olson. two have been really good. I've made my staff here at the office read them, and we've gone through them. Um, I love The Go-Giver. Um, I thought that's just a phenomenal book because so many people in today's society, it's all about me, 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 what's in it for me, what do I get out of this, and the go-giver turns that thinking around, it's not about you, it's about the others, and you actually will, will advance much more quickly in business if you're thinking of others than if you're thinking about yourself. Gotcha. Dan, advice to your um, younger self. I think. Dan, advice to your younger self, what would you say? To my younger self, develop a niche uh, much more um, soon as far as getting my business up and running. Develop that niche and really get zeroed in good on just a couple things. I started out as just more of a general accountant for way too many years. And it wasn't until the recession drove me into be becoming different from all the other accountants that I really dug into the tax planning arena. Gotcha. And finally, where can our listeners get a hold of you if they have any further questions? They can find me at www.taxcoachforyou.com, and we use the number four. So taxcoach, the number four, y-o-u.com. And out there, I love to give away free copies of my 10 Most Expensive Mistakes books. And we just ask that they pay a, a small amount for some shipping and handling. Um, I also would love to talk to anybody who is interested in finding out more about tax planning because there's so much to learn and most people don't even have never even given that any thought. Gotcha. Then it was wonderful having you with us today. Hope to speak with you soon. Alrighty. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.